So we're finally here. We're finally going to test this thing compared to what it used to be uh, and what it's trying to be. So the idea here is we're going to run the uh, 212 Evo and then we're going to run, you know, the uh, EK, you know, kit, the Performance 240 kit, just to see how they both perform. And then we're going to test it with this. So basically we're going to put this cooler on this loop and see if it does better than what it used to be uh, and how close it becomes to, you know, a standard water cooling solution like this EK kit. But before we get going, remember, thank you to Newegg and EK for making this all possible. And if you would like to get yourself a 240 performance kit like this one here, if you look down in the description below, there is a link in the description that will get you 10% off on this setup. So it's a pretty good deal. Go down there, check it out. And thank you again, Newegg and EK. So let's, let's get going. So first we're gonna do this one because this is the easiest one to set up. Next, we're gonna move to the EK kit. And then we're gonna do this one last because it's been quite a while since we used this bad boy. So I hope it holds together. And if it, if it doesn't, well, rip. But let's get this one set up first. Okay, so the testing's done. We've ran the EK system and just the standard 212 Evo. Uh, and the scores were, so the, I, the test I ran was Prime 95 for 30 minutes and I just kind of took their, you know, the average package temperature for you know, that 30 minute run. So here are the statistics for those two. So the Hyper 212 Evo had a high idle temperature of 50 degrees Celsius and an average load temperature of 73 degrees Celsius. And the average room temperature was 24.4 degrees Celsius to give me a delta of 48.6 degrees Celsius. The EK system had an idle temperature of 41.1 degrees Celsius with an average load temperature of 58.1 degrees Celsius and a room temperature of 23.5 degrees Celsius, which gave me a delta of 34.6. And just so you know, it was running on my, you know, my i5 2500K at 4.8 gigahertz with a 1.43 V core and all the temperatures are just average package temperatures. So now it's time to see if this thing leaks because it hasn't, I haven't used I haven't pumped water through this since the last time we did any testing and I'm a little concerned because this little pump is way stronger than, you know, the little Amazon pump, but we're going to try it. Uh, I got this, you know, I got the, the fan control on the pump to try to, we're going to try to ramp it down so we don't blow the doors off it, but we're going to see, we're just going to see what happens. So here we go. This thing's gotta run for 30 minutes, so we need to see to make sure it doesn't leak. So so far so good. That's how it always is. It's good right at the beginning. We're officially full-ish. I'm also running the pump pretty slow right now. Okay, so the pump is just barely running. We're not leaking. You can see the bubbles coming in on the side. But if we turn it up, what, what will be the outcome, I wonder? You know what, let's just go for it. So we're going max, max pump speed.
So we're just gonna let this run for a little bit just to make sure that nothing, you know, has the, because the pressure is a lot higher in the box now than it was uh, when we previously ran this thing. So we just wanna make sure that nothing lets go because we gotta make it through a whole Prime 95, 30 minutes to see what the temperature are, is and if we die halfway through, well then rip. So we'll let it run for a minute. If everything's good, I'll see you back in a minute with this thing mounted on the board and we're gonna give it a shot. So good news, we made it through 25 minutes of leak testing where I ran this thing just basically at full pump speed just to make sure the, you know, the, the added pressure this time around was not gonna force any leaks and we're good for now. I did jam a bunch of paper towels in there now that I got it mounted up just in case uh, things let go because we just gotta make it through 30 minutes of Prime 95 to get a good comparison of, between this, the EK system, and then the stock, you know, the, the what it used to be, the 212 Evo. So 30 minutes is all we're asking for, Mr. Waterblock. Can you, can you do it, please? So as of now, everything is still dry, surprisingly, but quite awesome. So the EK system, when I had this hooked up with its stock water block, the package temperature at idle was an average of 41.1 degrees Celsius, and that was at a room temperature of 23.5. Right now, as this sits, the idle temperature of this little water tower thing is 42.6 on the on the package and the room temperature is actually quite you know a bit cooler it's at 21.3 so the EK system was doing a bit better than this was but we kind of expected that what we really want to know is how well this does under load and that's what we're about to find out and as we said earlier this is the same overclock so it's, it's still at 4.8 gigahertz on this i5 2500k at the 4. Point, or the 1.4243 v core so everything's still the same and we'll see what the temps are So we did it. 30 minutes has gone by of Prime 95 and everything is still dry, surprisingly, and our motherboard is still working, which is a win in and of itself. So what did our package temperatures finish out at? So for this thing, the water-cooled 212 EVO, the average load package temperatures was 63.4 at a room temperature of 21.9, giving us a delta of 41.5, meaning that after we tested all these from best to worst, we have the EK water block, which I think we all knew was gonna happen, followed by this thing, the water-cooled air cooler, and then of course, the 212 Evo standard. So what's that mean? Does that mean that's as good as this can get? I think I know and you know that we can make this much, much better, and the, the easiest way to do so is to get some flow in here. So right now, water's just coming straight down and then going wherever it wants. But if we could get some sort of system in here to ensure that the water would pass through the cooling fins, I know that our temperatures would be much, much lower because right now we got air trapped in there, we got stagnant water, all the kind of things that we don't want when we try to cool stuff. So I think version two is gonna be a lot better. But now that we survived, let's, uh, let's, I'd like to get a visual of what the water flow is in here and I'm gonna do it in a way that is probably not recommended. I'm gonna use some food coloring to load up this reservoir. We're gonna turn off the pump, turn it back on and see how the water is passing through the system. Now I would say this for sure, don't use you know food coloring to dye your water in your water cooling system. I'm just gonna use it temporarily. After we're done looking at things, we're gonna, we're gonna flush the thing out and everything will be a-okay. And if it stains anything, well, I'll let you know and we'll find out together. All right, so we're just gonna use standard red food coloring, which I again would not recommend, but I think we'll be all right for temporary, temporary means. And we're just gonna load this bad boy up. Everything is off right now.
So I think it's pretty clear we got some flow issues to work with. The water is coming in one side, pooling over here, and then working at an angle up towards this side. And we're kind of getting a little dead spot at the top. But for what it is, it actually didn't do too bad. It outperformed itself. It's air curled version, so that's pretty cool. Obviously it didn't do as good as the EK version, but we kind of saw that coming. But for what it is, it still hasn't leaked, which I think is exceptional. And I'm just, I'm pretty proud of what, what it is. So I think in version two, we got a good idea on how we need to control the water flow to push the water through the fin stack to ensure that we get all the air out and we get much better cooling. So if you're thinking about getting to custom water cooling, I would not recommend doing this. Instead, I would tell you to go get yourself an EK kit for sure, because it's gonna get you everything you need to custom water cool your PC and it's gonna perform better than this. And it's also much, much safer. Uh, and if you hurry up down below in the link for a limited time, there's a 10% off this exact cooling setup. So get down there and get yourself a water cooling kit and get your PC water cooled. Also, if you're thinking about dyeing your water, I would not recommend using food coloring. I'm gonna get this cleaned up right now. Make sure you get the appropriate dyes and everything else uh, to run in your water cooling loop. But for now, I think we have a good idea on how to proceed to version two. So thank you for watching. This is Major Hardware. And again, thank you to EK and Newegg for making this possible. And we'll see you in the next video.